My mom and dad, AJ and Patsy Cantrell, were uh, murdered in Creek County in 2003. They had been married 50 years. They were just not the, the murder victims. They had lives before that and, you know, beautiful lives. When he was on the run, everybody around was scared, you know. They were sleeping with their guns and, you know, kind of scared to go to sleep. So it was three weeks that, you know, was real tense. Those cops in Depew, I think they had one. But I said, you know, that window is cracked in that church parsonage, you know, or the activity building. I said, have you looked in there for him? Oh yeah, he's not in there. He was in there. He was eating off of leftovers in the freezer that were from my mom and dad's anniversary. Yeah, that doctor just didn't have a big enough gun. He shot him, but it didn't, it didn't do the trick, you know. He lived through it. You go through a tragedy like that and all these microphones get stuck in your face, but you get to realize, you know, there's one, usually from each station that you, you know, you don't mind interviewing with, that you, you, you trust, but Lori kept being that one. And it got to the point where she was the only one that I wanted to deal with. She didn't pressure me. I knew that she was always a phone call away you know, I could call her, she could call me, you know, whenever she made me feel comfortable. And she, I knew when she put the story together, it was going to be told like I said it, you know. And sometimes they would just chop it up so much that it didn't even resemble, you know, what you talked about. And you don't want it to be forgotten ever, you know, especially when you're trying to get justice for something. You know, it's important to keep the story and the faces out there, and she's just been able to do that. And, you know, she's she's been perfect at it for me. I had to go through it twice. You know, my sister was murdered in a separate incident, but then again, immediately I knew, you know, I only wanted to interview about that with Lori. And so, you know, it's just one of those things that she's able to, you know, wrap her head and her heart around what's going on with a crime victim and a victim's family and what they need. And without exploiting it, she's there. She's right there, and she's good at what she does. Got a precious mother. Her mother prays for me, and it's like, you know, you become close, almost like, you know, dare I say family, but you get close to those people. I kind of was in shock still up to that point that it was even happening because, you know, so much was postponed. I told them all, I said, I will do one interview with the press and it's gonna be with Lori Fulbright after the execution. And so we went to the sheriff's office there in uh, McAllister and, and in a room and did the interview. And as it was over and, you know, I got up, you know, to leave, she had tears in her eyes. And I said, Lori, don't you cry because if you do, I'm gonna lose it. But, you know, I felt that too. And I said, this isn't, you know, this isn't over between us. And she said, oh, never girl, never. And that's, you know, that's her heart. That's her heart. And, you know, we, we both cried. And, and you know, she, I can't say enough beautiful things about her. And the way she goes around, you know, speaking and, and training and, and stuff like that, it's just, I mean, you know, every TV news station wishes they had that. And, you know, Channel 6 has been blessed to have Lori Fulbright. Lori Fulbright, I love you, girl. You know that. You have been with me from the beginning to what we seem to be the end, and, and you are special. I love you, my family loves you, and we all know that you love us. If you don't know Lori Fulbright, you should. If you ever get a chance to go hear her speak, you know, wherever she is, you know, she's way deeper than what you see on the news. She has a heart of gold, and She's a beautiful person, inside and out. Lori Fulbright, only on Oklahoma's own News on 6.